Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I want to talk about why it's really, really important to kind of care about your work. At the moment, I'm working on a multitude of different projects and a project recently, I felt that I wasn't really that engaged or connected to the whole project. So I did work on it. I did a whole bunch of analysis on loads and loads of documents, but that was all I did. So the process of what actually happens when you work in the expert witness part of engineering is that you do analysis, so you look at a load, load of different documents, form your analysis, write an opinion, and then that opinion goes into what we call an expert report. And for this project, all I was doing was the analysis part of it, and I wasn't really engaged in anything else, so I never really saw the end product, or I didn't have any feed into the end product other than this huge bit of analysis, which I did. And don't get me wrong, this bit of work was huge, it took me months to do really because there was just a sh shitload of documents to go through and the reason that which i'm kind of bringing this up and why i'm making this video is simply because i knew that the work that i was doing was not up to the quality which i know i could do and i think it's basically come down to the fact that i didn't feel that engaged with the overall project not to say that i didn't care about my work but i didn't go above and beyond what, what i would normally do in my work to make sure that the quality was tip top. I just about did enough, got the job done, and then I wanted to move on. I just didn't really feel that connection with the project because I was never really gonna feed into the, the ultimately the end product or the expert report. Now this doesn't just happen in expert work. It happens all the time in normal design consultancy. Like I've seen it happen before. It's happened to me when I was a design engineer. An example of this would be when I used to give work to technicians to draw up, we would give work to them via a sketch or marked up drawings. And a lot of the time they would basically just copy and paste the work. They never felt that connected with the project because they just felt as though they were just a resource within the company that some work has come along, we need you for three or four days to draw up this work. And that's it, you know, that, that's, all they need, that's all they thought they were doing. In the years that which I've been working as a design engineer, I think I've only come across about two technicians that truly cared about the work output which they delivered. And to me, that's really, really shocking because the drawings which get drawn by the technicians are essentially what gets built on site. And if things aren't clear, mistakes will happen on site. And if your drawings aren't clear or there are mistakes, the blame is gonna come down to you. And in severe cases, it could mean you know going to court, getting claims against you, which is really, really bad. And what we tried to do was to get the technicians more engaged into the project so that they didn't feel as though they were just a resource. We wanted them to have a really good input into the project, see the project all the way through from concept to construction, just like an engineer would. And that would hopefully get them more engaged and get them to care more about the quality which they were outputting, you know, make sure that the drawings that they were doing was really, really clear, make sure that they were doing all the checking themselves and not just reliant on the engineer doing the checking. There were so many times where the technicians just wouldn't self-check. They would simply copy and paste a sketch which I, which I had done or copy and paste a markup which I had done and then be done with it. They wouldn't self-check their work, they would sort of do the work, print it, put it on my desk without having looked at it again. And that to me, that was just really, really bad on them. And we were trying to think of ways without kind of telling them, you know, you need to check your work, which we did. But we wanted them to have that ownership of the work. Once you have ownership of your work, I think you'll find that you'll care more about the quality of the work which you produce. And again, this is not just applicable technicians. Engineers will have this problem as well. There are times when someone's gonna ask you, oh, can you just do this analysis or can you just do this quick design for me on a project which you know nothing about. You're just treated as a resource and that's kind of okay sometimes, but in the long run, it's better if you have a more holistic view of the overall project. Quite a common example would be, can you design these balustrades for me for this balcony? Or for instance, could you just design these balconies? Like these balconies could be for like a 20 story building, but you're just gonna be looking at one little aspect of it and you don't really understand the whole 
building the you're just concentrating on on the small little part and for some people that might be okay but I think for a lot of people if you're finding that you're not really caring about the work you're kind of just doing the work you're being told to do without much care about that overall project it might be time for you to sort of ask about doing more of the project getting more involved with the whole side of the project for one it's going to make you look a lot better in the eyes of you know your managers and it's great for your own personal development one of the great reasons i think working for a smaller or a medium-sized company is because they do smaller and medium-sized jobs more often and on these jobs as a young engineer you definitely get to see a wider picture of the entire project i think that if you work for a huge company and you're only working on mega projects you'll definitely be pigeonholed into looking at a really small aspect of a project such as just looking at the foundations for a huge project but that small pro that small part of the foundation design is huge but you'll only be looking at the foundations and i think that's really important that you kind of get out of that and make sure you get a holistic view or an overall view of everything which you're doing on this recent project which i did we had a lessons learned or just a catch-up call with the manager of the project and it was basically just to have a chat about what I thought about the project and what went well, what didn't go so well. And to be honest, I was very, very blunt with her. And I just said that I really didn't enjoy this part of the project because I just didn't really have any anything to do with the final product. All I was doing was all this analysis without really knowing what it was leading up to. Like I didn't have like a progress route from, okay, I'm gonna do this analysis, but then this is gonna feed into this answering this question and that's going to feed into the report like I knew the work was going to feed into the report but because I wasn't doing that final stage of it I just really didn't feel connected into the project and I think what's really important is that now that we've had this chat we've had this experience we've both learned from it moving forward for we're certain that we're going to be working together again we're going to know that this is what how I would like to work, which is I'll do the analysis, but I'm also going to take that analysis all the way through and form my opinion and write that section of it in the report. And I think what she learned from it is she had no idea that that's actually what I wanted. And it might have been my fault for not bringing it up earlier. But since I was new, my excuse was maybe just doing what I was told and not really pushing it further. Whereas other projects which I've been doing more recently, that's kind of what I've been pushing because I've gained more experience. So what I do now is I do the analysis, form the opinion and write a report. So I get to see the whole process, which is way better for my own personal progression. And it's also great for the manager, the overall expert, because I'm taking a lot of the work away from them so that they're not having to look at just my analysis and then forming opinion. They've basically packaged up this whole work, given it to me, and I can just run with it. And I think that's going to be great for design engineers. If your manager can see that you're not just looking at analysis, you can do the analysis, you can do the design, you can do the markup, the sketching, and then you can do the review work for the technician's drawings. That's going to be great because that's going to take a load of work off their hands. They can just say, look, we need the balconies designed. We need this portion of the building designed. Here you go. Here's the backstory of it. Crack on. And that is a major major win for any project manager or any project engineer looking after projects that they can just package up all the work and just ship it off to you that is just awesome so what i'm trying to get to is if you've ever found yourself in a situation where you're kind of just like floating around you're just doing the work you're not really caring too much i think there's a question to be asked is are you getting a holistic view or are you getting an overall view of the project or are you just doing small little odd jobs for people on loads and loads of different projects or if you're a new project engineer or you're just starting into managing projects and you want to try and get a bit more out of your technicians or your design engineers or your graduate engineers this might be something which you could try out is to get them more involved get them to care a little bit more about the project so that eventually they can go to meetings they can go to site get them to experience it all not just have them sat in the office all day crunching out the numbers or crunching out drawings get them involved in all aspects because some some days 
you'll want to take a day off. Some days you'll be busy going into a meeting and if you can trust them to do, you know, go to a meeting on your behalf, go to site on your behalf, that is going to be really, really awesome for the project and for the team and for everyone's development. This video has been unscripted. I'm kind of just shooting from the hip a little bit. But this is something which I do care about quite a lot because I experience this problem with technicians all the time, you know, a few years ago when I was still a design engineer. And that really did bug me that they didn't really care. And I think it's really, really important that you care about the work which you do because that's going to affect the quality or the output of your work. If you ever find that you stop caring, you might want to ask yourself, what's gone wrong? What's changed? Why is my quality dipped? Like I knew fair well that the quality I was doing for this project, the project which I didn't really care about, was definitely not, not up to my own standard. I knew that, and so I knew that I definitely wanted to bring this up with the manager. So if you ever feel like your work quality is not good enough, make sure that you talk to your manager, make sure that you communicate well. There's no point just sitting on it and just coasting. You know, I think that's the worst thing which you could do is just to coast and think that everything is okay and just being told what to do. I don't think that's healthy and I don't think that's sustainable. So make sure that you talk to your peers or your managers about it. If they're a good manager, they'll listen and it'll make changes for you. Anyways, hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Please remember to like and subscribe and I'll catch you on the next video. Cheers.